In case you were absent for the in-class activity, the same yet smaller, or you want a brief refresher before doing your homework, let's talk about the basics of sequences. First and foremost, a sequence is defined as an ordered list of numbers or objects, and a term is each of the numbers or objects in the sequence. In class, the objects were different stages of Sierpinski's triangle, and then we turned some of the information in Sierpinski's triangle into a number sequence like this one. Not exactly this one, but like this. So I want to describe this sequence, 3, 15, 75, 375. And in class, we talked about a certain kind of rule called a recursive rule. And what recursive rules do is they describe a procedure that is applied over and over again, starting with some basic number or geometric figure, and then the procedure to turn that initial first term into the other terms. So in this case, I start with the number 3, and I have to figure out what changes a 3 into a 15, and a 15 into a 75, and a 75 into a 375. And if I just do a little bit of tinkering, I get multiplied by 5. So the procedure to turn one term into another term, or into the next term, is to multiply by 5, which gives me a description or a recursive rule that start with 3, multiply previous by 5. And for a recursive rule, you always have to tell me what you start with because otherwise you can have infinitely many sequences that have the procedure of multiply previous by 5. What pins it to this particular sequence is the start with value. Now there is a shorthand notation. This is sentence form of a recursive rule. We can also talk about sequences in sequence notation. And sequence notation looks like this. So any general sequence, meaning some generic sequence, can be defined in sequence notation like this. a sub 1, comma a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4, dot dot dot, comma a sub n. These little numbers that are a little bit lower than the letter are called subscript numbers, which is why this is read a sub 1. So it's, that sub is shorthand for subscript and it tells you what term of the sequence you have. Now remember, sequences are ordered, so first term, second term, third term, fourth term matters. So if I look back up, the, up at this original sequence, 3 is the a sub 1 term, and 15 is the a sub 2 term, 75 is a sub 3, and 375 is a sub 4. Now this a sub n is a general term, or a generic term in the nth position, okay, and it's just a variable that represents any single term. Now if I want to convert this recursive sentence into the language and notation of sequences, I can. It's really quite easy. You have to remember that start with means the first term, so that means the first term a sub 1 has to equal 3. a sub 1 equals 3 is the sequence notation equivalent of the phrase start with 3. And I put some comma, and it says multiply previous by 5. And this is the part that's a little bit different. Well, I know I have to have a 5 times for multiply previous by. And if I say just some general term, I multiply some term by 5, well, I have to somehow indicate that a sub n is the previous term. And the way to do that is to think about what's the very next term. If a sub n is one term in the sequence, what's the very next term? Well, what am I doing to the index is I'm adding one to the index. So what happens is the very next term is a sub n plus one. And so then I have to say that five times the previous term is gonna to equal to the next term, which looks like this. So this, a sub one equals three for start with, five times a sub n equals a sub n plus one is the multiplied previous by five. This is the rule that will generate this sequence. Working backwards, if I tell you if this is the rule for a sequence in sequence notation, I ask you to generate the sequence, that means I want you to write out the terms of the sequence. So I have to start with the first term, which is four. And then this rule tells me the next term, n plus 1, is equal to the previous term, a sub n, plus 7. So I just have to add 7 to 4, and then I get the next term. And then to find the third term, I take 11, I add 7, I get 18. 
and then so on and so forth. So that's how we can use these rules to generate a sequence. Now if I wanted to convert this to sentence format to make sure I understood what it meant, this says start with four because the very first term is four and then this thing says add, because there's an addition, seven to the previous. Now there's one more thing we talked about with the same yet smaller and that was the word we used to describe the multiplier in a sequence. So if I look at this particular sequence I see that I'm multiplying by two every single time and we have a word for the multiplier. The multiplier is also called the common ratio. And the reason why it's called the common ratio is because if I took a term like 10 and divided it by 5, the previous term, I'm going to get a t uh, the common ratio, the 2. If I take 20 and I divide it by the previous term, I get the 2. If I take 40 and I divide it by its previous term, I get 2. And see how this 2 is common to each of these ratios? That's why it's called the common ratio.